What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I want to show off a little bit of Android 9.0 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is coming to us courtesy of Constakang.com. This is an unofficial port of Lineage OS 16.0. Keep in mind, this is very early and it's using the Google Swift Shader driver for the GPU so things aren't that smooth, but it is very early for this build. Either way, I wanted to show it off because there is some stuff that's working in here and this is an awesome step forward for the Raspberry Pi community. This does not come preloaded with GAP, so you don't have Google Play pre-installed, but it's easily installed if you follow a tutorial by PC Mac. I'll leave a link in the description. He did some awesome work getting Google Play up and running on this, and it works fine on the Pi 4. So as you can see here, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. This is the 4 gigabyte model. I do have the CPU overclocked to 2.14 gigahertz, and I have the GPU overclocked to 700 megahertz. This is using the Google Swift Shader GPU driver, so things aren't that smooth. We only have OpenGL ES 2.0. So don't expect to be running Call of Duty Mobile or PUBG anytime soon on this, but it is Android 9. And like I mentioned, it is an unofficial build of Lineage OS, so don't expect updates from the Lineage team. So it's a little slow right now, even with this overclock, but there is some stuff that's working in here and some stuff that I haven't really even tested. First up, Let's check out some YouTube video playback. I'm not sure how well this is going to work out, but it should be able to do at least 480p, I think. To my surprise, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and sound out of HDMI is working. Unfortunately, with the Wi-Fi, at least in my case, I can't pick up any of my 5 gigahertz network, so I'm running on a 2.4 gigahertz now. The Pi 4 does support AC Wi-Fi, but for some reason, it just won't pick it up for this build, at least for me. So far, it's actually not looking that bad. And it's at 720p. Pretty cool, we'll just make sure it's sitting at 720p, 60 FPS. We'll resume this video here. This is actually pretty impressive because if you remember when the Raspberry Pi 4 was first released, it had trouble running 720p video using Raspbian in YouTube and Right here, we have one of the first releases of Android, and it's not looking bad at all. I'd say it's only going to get better from here, but it really relies on getting a true GPU driver for Android and the Raspberry Pi 4. To my knowledge, I don't think we ever got a really good driver for the Raspberry Pi 3. Hopefully it's a little different for the Pi 4, because Android on this board would be pretty awesome. We even have this little picture-in-picture -picture mode, which looks like it's running pretty good, but I don't think we'll be able to run dual apps that well on this unit. I did try running a couple benchmarks, but everything failed, so let's try some gaming, some native Android gaming, and we're going to go with a really easy one to run, Minecraft. Keep in mind, it's really early for this release of Android, so this is probably going to be slow. So I had to skip ahead a little bit. I did do a little bit of testing, but I had to turn all the settings down. I am using an Xbox One controller connected over USB and it seems to work in most apps that support controllers. So we're far from 60 FPS in Minecraft Pocket Edition here on the Raspberry Pi 4, but it is working. I mean, I wouldn't call this a playable experience, but in my opinion, it's still pretty cool to see Minecraft Pocket Edition running on a Raspberry Pi, even though we're around 20 FPS, maybe even lower than that. And keep in mind, I do have my Raspberry Pi 4 overclocked to pretty much the max, 2.14 gigahertz on all four CPU cores, and 700 megahertz on the GPU. I'm really not sure if the GPU overclock is helping in Android because it's only using that Swift shader, but either way, I just wanted to throw it in there just in case. And for anybody wondering, I am using the Ice Tower cooler for the Pi 4 here, so we're not overheating at all. So this version of Lineage OS does not come pre-installed with any kind of gap, so you don't have Google Play installed, but it's really easy to install if you follow PC Max tutorial on YouTube. I'll link his channel in the description. It took me about five minutes to get it up and running, and it works fine with this build, but you need to follow his tutorial to the T. So I personally have a lot more testing to do with Lineage OS on the Raspberry Pi 4, but seeing the performance in Minecraft, I don't think we're going to be able to do any of these 3D Android games right now. Maybe some of the lower end 2D stuff will work. So if there's anything else you want to see running in this build on the Raspberry Pi 4, let me know in the comments below and I can kind of do a little showcase video. But I do a lot of emulation on my channel and I wanted to test at least one in this video. So we're going to go with Nintendo 64 using MooPin64FZ from the Google Play Store. 
One of the big downsides about running Android on the Raspberry Pi 4 is we're reliant on that SD card, at least for now. Maybe in the future we can run this from a USB SSD, but right now the only way I know how to run this is from an SD, so loading time with apps isn't that great, but it's really not the slowest I've ever run into. So for this test here, I've set it to the lowest resolution with Moopin64 plus FZ. I also have the FPS listed in the very top, and I'm using a Bluetooth Xbox One controller. Seems to work fine, but every once in a while I notice if I start the game and I don't press the A button, the controller won't work inside of the game. This will probably be fixed in a later version of Android for the Pi 4. Overall though, N64 emulation on the Pi 4 running Android really isn't that bad. Now Mario Kart 64 is an easier one to emulate, it actually works pretty well on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. So let's move over to something a little harder to emulate, and that's going to be GoldenEye 007. So I really can't complain here for a first release of Android and N64 emulation. I do notice some stutters. It kind of feels like it's trying to load shader cache, and I've really never had this happen with the N64 emulator. Again, it could be because we're running from that SD card. The operating system, the game I'm playing here, and the emulator playing it all have to access from that micro SD card, so that could be the problem. To tell you the truth, I'm pretty sure that's what's causing these stutters. But overall, emulation here, while we don't have that stuttering going on, really isn't bad. There's one last thing I wanted to test in this video, and that's touch functionality over USB. So I have one USB cable plugged into my touchscreen monitor. I also have HDMI going to the Pi and power from the wall to the Pi. Like I said, I do have this little Pi overclock, so I needed that ice tower cooler on it. Keep in mind, this is touch over USB. This is not using the DSi port on the Pi. I'm not sure if that works at the moment, but it probably will in the future. At least we have touch over USB. Now this isn't something you want to run out and buy the parts to build right now, because this version of Lineage OS for the Pi 4 is a bit slow, but hopefully over time development ramps up on this and we get a full-fledged, fully functional version of Android 9 or 10 on the Pi 4. And the way the community is handling development on the Pi 4 right now, it definitely looks possible. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a link to where you can get this image. All you need to do is flash it to an SD card, and I'll also leave a link to PC Max tutorial on installing Google Play. If there's a lot of interest in this, I could personally do a full tutorial. Just let me know in the comments below, and I can whip something up. But keep in mind, this is an unofficial build of Lineage OS for the Raspberry Pi 4, so the Lineage team won't be handling updates on this. And it's still slow, even on the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 4GB model, overclocked to 2.14GHz. Mainly, it's slow because it's using that Google Swift shader driver, that's what's given us the lag here in the menus and gaming. So hopefully, somebody can come up with a nice GPU driver for Android on the Pi 4 soon. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see a full tutorial made, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.